Hi, Discover Church members and all those who are watching by YouTube. Pastor Steve Chigalanti here. It's a real grief for me to talk about Israel right now. Uh, about four or five days ago, you wouldn't believe how hard it was to make a video uh, where the Lord told me to tell people war is imminent. And, you know, on top of the grief of knowing that people were hurt and died, about 900 people lost their lives in this Palestinian terror attack. Hundreds have been abducted, uh, evidently as um, kind of booty or prize so that they can get, in a, get a prisoner exchange for the Palestinian criminals that are incarcerated. But on top of this grief that I feel, I sense a grief that I have to explain to Christians not to mock prophecy in the last days and not to mock prophets. Because I had them, you know, as soon as I put out wars imminent, they want to say, they left comments like, well, that's just a clickbait comment. I remember seven years ago when I posted the vision, my explanation of the vision of Nathan or Nathan, the young Jewish boy who evidently was given a picture of the end time and it just happened. You got to go back to that seven-year-old video and it's like verbatim, you know, verbatim. I'll show you on the, on the screen here. This one, 15-year-old secular Jewish boy, had a vision of World War III. It's going to be a very big war, and everybody, the whole world, will be in that war, based on what I learned. The whole world will be in that war. Everybody, all the Gentiles, all the Arabs, everybody will be against Israel and will fight in that war. He said uh, clearly, number one, one of the surprising things that will happen in the end time is uh, Israel is going to be defeated. The IDF is going to be defeated. It's going to last about two weeks. Uh, number two, he explained uh, when his rabbi asked him, well, who did you see? Where where were, uh, where were was ISIS? Uh, this is interesting because right now, everybody's calling Hamas ISIS. He said he saw ISIS and what they were doing was they were just kidnapping people. God was kidnapping. Where is ISIS in all this? ISIS. This is what I saw. They will kidnap people. They will just kidnap people. They will kidnap our people? Yes, like they did to Galad Shalit. They will also do that. They will kidnap people and torture them and things like that. And then the rabbi asked, well, who's God? Who's coming to war against Israel? And he said, don't you know? God against Obama. How will it begin? It will be started by somebody named Gog. As far as I knew up there, only up there. He is called Gog? Yes. And do you know who this Gog is? I am sure I know who it is. Who is it? Obama. President Obama. He will start Gog and Magog? He will be the one who starts that war. He will bring his whole army. He will start the war here. And so there's a lot of things that are being confirmed. And of course, that video seven years ago got mocked because as soon as Obama finished his term, what do, you know, silly Christians who don't have a fear of God say? They post comments, they get very brash, and they posted these comments, well, you're a false prophet because Obama's gone, as if that's a joy for them to say things like that. And seven years later, you know what? Obama was one of the few leaders in the world who said nothing. He was the one who funded Iran, and Iran has funded Hamas. And Biden has recently funded Iran at the tune of $6 billion. So Obama is still here in Washington. Obama is still pulling the strings behind Biden. And Obama is going to come back. And I think one of the surprising things would be if, um, by the way, in, in the last video, I said that we know for sure that U.S. warships were already scheduled to be deployed, and they are now deploying early. Maybe repetitiously that they were going to go to East and Europe. Of course, that has absolutely changed. Somehow they knew they needed these areas to go, the Navy um, to go, and they're going directly to Israel. 
directly to Israel. It'd be very interesting if, uh, you know, the excuse for them going is to go and stop any other actors from uh, coming to invade Israel, just keep a war between Hamas and Israel. But I have a feeling about this. Maybe I'm not going to share yet because I want to address just the sense of grief, not only for the, the loss of lives, but the fact that Christians are not attuned enough to the Holy Spirit in these end times. We could be the voice of the Spirit, the voice of um, the voice, the spiritual voice of what does this all mean? And I would not be here to comment on that. In fact, you know that I've waited at least three days to make a comment because I feel like, number one, if somebody else says it better than me, I'm happy. That's fine. I don't need to get on video every time and make a comment. It's not my job. I'm here to preach the word of the Lord. So I did wait, and I feel like, okay, I've heard everything that's been said, and I've definitely got things to say and to contribute that you've not heard of. And some of it will be shocking, some of it will be disturbing, some of it will be difficult to receive, but that's the office and the anointing of the prophet. I'm just going to speak the word of the Lord. I also had to wait a few days, if I can speak personally to you, and just make sure that uh, I was in my own heart ready, because there's so many things that I saw that happened that I have comments on, and so many things I've heard about the comments. And, you know, I got to make sure that I, I never preach uh, to vent my own emotions, to, uh, you know, voice my own opinion. I really want the word of the Lord for you. A word in season is what I'm going to give you today. I'm going to answer a lot of questions that people have asked. I want to talk about prophecy. I want to talk about where we're at. Okay? So, First of all, what we know for sure now is that the uh, timeline has been confirmed. And I gave myself a room uh, to be judged. I said, go ahead and judge. If you don't see a series of wars uh, in the next two and a half years, that means that my timeline, my interpretation is wrong. That's fine. Okay, good. But uh, it's not wrong. Uh, what we said is that the white horse has galloped for three and a half years, and now the red horse is galloping for three and a half years. And you will see a confirmation of this. And we've seen basically the biggest war and the biggest casualty in Israel. It's a grief to, to, uh, to actually tell people this because nobody wants to be right when you're speaking about such catastrophes. But God is right. And God wants us to wake up. So the timeline is clear. Uh, this is going to spread. Because it's the red horse, this is going to spread. And what we saw in, in Israel is going to spread over to America. Uh, right now, what we don't know for sure is which group, which group is going to be the one that spreads it. So it's going to be Black Lives Matter, you know, possibly, because they're looking at this template right now of how they organize such terror, organize such terror. This is just horrible to talk about. Organize such terror that it was successful on a large scale. Well, that's what Black Lives Matter is watching. You also have a bunch of Afghan Taliban terrorists that have come into the United States with the help of the Biden administration when America pulled out of Afghanistan in such an atrocious way. It was so, uh, either it, if it was planned, it was disorganized. If it was not planned, um, and then it's just an indictment on them. So we're going to have something on the order of this kind of crisis happening in the places where they are celebrating the, the supposed victory of Hamas. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, New York is going to get hit. Uh, Tampa is going to get hit. Toronto was uh, celebrating. Unfortunately, my own country, Australia, Sydney, you can see videos of people celebrating and saying, F the Jews. When they're just been killed. I mean, it's, it's so inhumane. But that's, you know, that's what Ishmael was predicted to do in the last days. So it confirms that we have now a workable plan for the next 10 years. This is very clear now, and all those who are prophecy teachers who are um, teaching otherwise, maybe you might update, have a look 
at how I taught this over the last few sessions and just have a look at that, okay? Again, I'm not dogmatic. I'm happy to be corrected, but it looks pretty solidly confirmed. What this also means for all of us is that it invalidates some of the other timelines. So the people that are looking for the Ezekiel 3839 invasion, American preachers are preaching the same thing since what I heard 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Russia is always the enemy. You know, Russia is actually more Christian in many, many ways, especially the government is more Christian in its behavior, its legislation than the U.S. government. And America is still on this, you know, this old teaching and this old perception that Russia is the bad guy. Russia is uh, out to wage war. If you actually knew the history of what went on in Ukraine from 2014 until now, it's been a 10 year wait where Putin begged and pleaded with the West, keep the Minsk Accord, keep your word, don't go to war, let's settle this. I mean, if you knew any history, you would realize that's what actually happened. And it was the West and America that broke the Minsk Accord, broke our promises, used the promise like the Minsk Accord to basically stall and weaponize Ukraine and get a guy like Zelensky installed, who's a puppet of the West, and then just sent them to death. This is one of the sad things that I have to say today that some of my listeners may not understand. But when you're a friend of America, you spill blood. You know, Ukraine is supposed to be a friend of America. And how many? Is it like 400,000 casualties? Dead people? dismembered people, men who lost limbs, lost their children. Well, why? For being a friend of America. Because America said, we want to push NATO. We want to push NATO further. And Russia said, since World War II, it's okay to have NATO, but don't bring them to our border. That's the agreement. That was the promise that America gave. It's a, another promise that was broken. And so Ukraine is suffering for no other reason than that it trusted NATO and trusted America. So it weaponized, it challenged Russia. There was no way that they were going to win. All of the ministers and the Christians who were siding with Ukraine, um, you were not led by the Spirit. I wish you would, you would admit that because we need you to be led by the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit needs you. We don't need anyone left behind. But be that as it may... Um, some of these timelines where people are just expecting Russia to come down and invade uh, Israel. Well, if that, if that happened, it wouldn't fulfill any prophecy, but that's not going to happen. It's got nothing to do with uh, the narrative of the Bible, but people still teach that. People still teach that God and, and Magog uh, could be Russia. Um, strangely enough, Natan, the Jewish boy, seven years ago, had a vision. Uh, he said, Gog is Obama. So what an irony, huh? If Russia is pointing, to, uh, America is pointing to Russia as Gog and Magog, and the whole time Gog and Magog is, you know, the only Muslim president that America has ever had, wouldn't that be a, a real twist in the story? So I think we we need to humble ourselves and allow for corrections. You know, I, I've been corrected by what happened uh, in the invasion of Israel. Now that I look at the red horse, uh, it seems a lot clearer. The the Bible says that the red horse, when he gallops. He was given power to take peace away from the earth. And I was thinking, well, where would this war be? Is it an escalation of Ukraine? Is it uh, going to go into Russia? But now that it happened, it's, it's so clear. The Bible said it. The escalation is to take peace from the earth, which in Hebrew is the Eretz. And the Eretz is synonymous with Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. So the red horse could be um, identified when we see a surprise attack on the Eretz, the land of Israel, which then will spread, will take peace away from obviously Israel and the Middle East, but I believe it will spread. That means that you just have to put yourself in the shoe of all these evil dictators. You have to think like them and, and, and try. If you hate America, what would you do right now? If I was China, I'd invade Taiwan real soon, real soon. While Biden is in power, and the world is, uh, America's running out of ammunition, is not able to support the war in Ukraine. Ukraine's obviously losing. Now America brings its military to another front on the Middle East. If you create a third front, America will literally run out of the ability and the ammunition to fight a three-pronged war. It's not going to win. 
So uh, this timeline about the red horse is not Ezekiel 38, 39. So please uh, stop repeating things that you heard your teacher or your pastor or somebody else in Bible school say, and it's 25, 30, 40 years old. You know, we have so much more light. We, we know what's going on. This is not what's happening. This is not Ezekiel 38 in any way at all. And you can write books about it and sell lots of copies, but it's not what is happening. It's not the right timeline. Some people are saying that, you know, we're going to head into the U.S. dollar collapse. Well, if this timeline is correct, yes, you can have stock market corrections. Yes, October is often a bad month, not a bad month to call for a correction and a, and a dip. But you, you see what happened when that brother asked me, should I buy the dip? I said, stock market gonna, is going to boom. The stock market loves nothing more than war. I mean, if anything, if I may say that America, of all the theaters for war, there's only one place where America makes money on both sides, and that's the Middle East. America funds Iran, who funds Hamas, and America funds Saudi Arabia by selling arms, and America funds Israel. So if you think like an evil megalomaniac that run some of the Western industrial world, then money's good. War is good. It's what Schindler said. Remember that in Schindler's list? Oscar Schindler said, what's the difference between all his effort to be a successful businessman in the past and now? And he said, the difference is war. War made him rich. War makes businessmen rich. And so the stock market's going to go up. I'm not commenting on the short-term correction, maybe in October. The stock market's going to go up. The U.S. dollar is not likely to crash. Yes, there's competition through BRICS. We'll see what happens with that. But the timeline now that we have it confirmed what Revelation 6 is about, we're looking at a timeline of 2027 for the black horse, and that's the global famine, right? So what goes on for the next two and a half years? It's going to be war, 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 and it's going to be profitable and the stock market's going to sadly love it and, uh, and people are going to make money off of this. So it goes to show though how the people who run the Western world will spare no lives, will kill as many bodies as possible to prop up this money you know, money, I heard somebody say the money magic system, it's like magic, out of thin air, they're just printing money and in order, in order to keep the liquidity going, in order to keep the stock market going, we just have war and war means we're selling more weapons and that's going to just fuel and pump the economy. So uh, I respect all the other voices. I'm glad they're there. I, I listen, I pray. I never like to contradict anybody, but I personally believe that we're in the Revelation 6 timeline. We're not looking at the U.S. dollar collapse quite yet. So we're not looking for the Ezekiel 38 war. We're not looking for the U.S. dollar collapse. We're also not looking for this time of amazing peace. Somebody said, well, you know, Israel's going to win real fast. Will it have peace? Yes, Israel probably will gain land. It should. When you're the victor in an invasion, uh, you should gain land. That's how everybody's gained land all throughout the world in all the nations. I don't know why the left hate only Israel that gains land, but all over the world, it, it's been the same. If you're the conqueror, you get land. So uh, we need to talk about the timeline in detail in another teaching. Otherwise, you can go to my End Time University. You can go to Discover Church Online, and you'll see lots of curriculum about End Time. You can go ahead and study that and catch up on it. Um, I appreciate all the different timelines and theories that people have given, but Right now, they're invalidated. They're invalidated. It's not what people say. And so today, you see, I wear Kim Clement's scarf. I think of all the days, uh, it's appropriate to wear this one because the prophet's anointing was on me to warn you, war is imminent and war came. And I, I, I used to wonder, you know, until I, I met so many ministers, I used to wonder, um, why are they so resistant? to prophecy. And and then now you hear some of them go, oh, the great prophet Kim Clement. Oh, as the prophet Kim Clement said, and I, I think, well, why didn't you quote him before? Why weren't you following him before? Like some of us, you know, were listening. But now everybody can quote him. And you know why? 
this, this is reveals the state of the body of Christ. You know why they can quote Kim Clement now? Because he's dead. Because he's gone. And that means two things. Number one, he's not a threat to the other ministers. He's no longer a threat to them and their, their ministry. And also it means he's not taking any money from all the donors. And so it has no financial consequence anymore to quote Kim Clement. And um, if you quote a living prophet, if you quote somebody that's already, that's still here, then you might have an obligation. And so people don't like that. And then they, they don't want competition. So I've just noticed things like that. And I think the body of Christ has got to mature. The body of Christ has got to get better. In fact, I like to say, if you do quote Kim Clement, you should give money to his wife, Jane, and his daughter, Donne. They're running a ministry still. You know, they're still uh, putting out videos about the legacy of Kim Clement. Why don't you give to them? Right? If you respect them. But see, it's easy. It's easy to quote somebody who's gone. So today, I'm going to be like Kim Clement, minus the singing. I, I don't have the wonderful talent that he had. What a wonderful musician, worshiper, prophet uh, he was. Such a blessing. And maybe God knew that he had to be gone for more people to be able to accept him, quote him, and not feel threatened and not feel financially like it's competition. But I, I just think the body of Christ, if I had one word, the body of Christ, as prophecies unfolding, what it's revealed to me is the body of Christ is so carnal. We, so, we see things in such a fleshly way. And our, you know, Leaders, our great leaders in the body of Christ, see things from such an emotional filter, financial filter, sometimes jealousy filter, and, and just judge things purely on carnal basis. Um, I've had somebody on that's been quite accurate, Brandon. He was a janitor for 14 years. Again, why don't we quote Brandon? Because he's alive, because he could be financial competition. Why don't you invite Brandon to go speak at your churches? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you think that he's, he's not a good speaker, but if he is accurate, then why would you judge him on a carnal basis? I'm just speaking it like it is. I told you, I'm going to go off on this and I have a lot more to say. I am talking about Israel. All right. So the prophet's anointing is confirmed and the timeline is confirmed. I think people are, are kind of positioning themselves spiritually, financially, geographically. I think that's okay. So we wanted, we do want to talk about that. I want to give praise, a good praise report for somebody who also contacted us and said, well, they've got a $10 million chalet in Switzerland and they're praying to sell it off right now and they would like to donate a tie. They donate a tie to the ministry. Well, that would be a million dollars. And that doesn't buy us a building, but that would, you know, contribute a long way towards getting um, a really great uh you know, headquarters for us, build a church basically uh, for us. So that's good. And that's how I'm living these days. I mean, I gave my biggest offering uh, in, in 2013. All right. Because I know what's coming. I know what's coming. So I'd rather keep some of my treasures in heaven rather than try to accumulate all these things on the earth. Join an international online church community that's tuned into prophecy. Become an active collaborator choose care groups and discipleship paths designed for your spiritual growth and get involved in daily prayer, all in one app. You'll also get full weekly sermons uncensored by Big Tech. Ministry partners can download our app now at discoverchurch.online. That's discoverchurch.online. Activate your faith and let's meet online.